What's going on guys, Vic VP back with a Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we have another ultimate handheld going out to California, but I think it is time that we discuss a newer, bigger upgrade known as the ultimate handheld. I mean, I thought this, what I did with this was crazy. Wait till you see this. And the ally. All right, guys, you know, Joe, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and all of that. Again, I can't stress enough. I have the Linktree social link there. Why aren't you following? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. You'd see everything. Me working in the garage, me streaming now. I'm getting more into the streaming. I just did the Ninja Warrior game. Uh, I streamed that, Ninja Saviors, I should say. Uh, just streamed that yesterday, so basically just enjoying life, gaming, building arcade cabinets. I do have a big project I just started. There's a lot, so why don't you follow me? Just be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP on all the socials. But enough of that. Let me tell you the kind of breakdown I want to get out of this video. We're gonna first talk about this unit that's in my hands, which we'll briefly discuss as I've made many videos on the ultimate handheld. Basically, the objective of this video is to talk about the newer, next generation of the Ultimate Handheld. Yes, as you can see, this is a Steam Deck. I bought my Steam Deck a month after it was released. Now we do have another competitor device known as the Ally. Both of the devices, honestly, are similar. I'm going to give you my personal opinion as to why I dubbed this the new Ultimate Handheld. I'm gonna talk about my personal handhelds here, how I use it, how I personally game with it and such, and basically just, let's talk about like the limits and what we could basically do with this. Now also I'm gonna talk about my specific features that I have in my handheld. Really there's no modding to this. There's minor modding, not as intense as modding this, but basically I can tell you what I have, how I game, how I kind of have it set up, and uh, if you do have one of these devices, you might be able to do it yourself. Now, if you saw my last video talking about Bobby Vu's ultimate handheld, I always post it. I then also make like these kind of TikTok versions and Instagram kind of one minute highlight reel type of things. I post those and then sure enough, I got about five or six hits saying, hey Vic, can you do mine? Can you do mine? What is the process? What can we do? So I have many videos on this. Uh, Honestly, the modding scene for this has slowed down ever since the tinfoil fiasco with these free shops. You could go back on Bobby Vu's video and see me discuss and talk about that. I did let this person know about the tinfoil issue and basically how to install new games. This does have the regular 5,000 retro art games. So this has built into it arcade, which is at a limit. Um, you know, you're not gonna get like, you know, Techno Parrot Arcade, obviously. You're getting your main Final Burn Alpha Arcade on this. And then retro consoles up to the N64. So I have the NES, the Super NES. I have all the Game Boys, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. And then I even have like the Segas, like the 32X, the Genesis, the Master System, and such. So there is a lot going on in this device. Again, the one big downside is the tinfoil free shops. That is gone. Uh, I've said in the last video, even trying to get a paid pro shop, I've never had any luck getting these. So I did say it in the last video, I told this person, I'm telling everybody now, basically you have to prepare yourself to do this whole DBI transaction kind of, not transaction, DBI transfer. Um, basically where you're downloading the ROM, you're connecting it to the PC, and then you're installing it to your device. That is really the only way to get these games down packed. So basically what I have in my hands here again is somebody's device. This does have the 25, the 1,025 uh, PSP games. And I did put, I have to do the math actually, it's 16, it's 16 rows times two, four, six. So 16 times six. I had to break out the calculator for that, but it is 96 pre-installed games for this person. Basically once they get it, They'll have 96 games, quite a plethora of games to choose from. I also did more recent games. Keep in mind, again, with my Ultimate Arcade builds, I've had these games. You're looking at around two to four terabytes. I don't really remember the number because I'm doing a lot of downloading and stuff. 
but there is a lot of games like the newer one that came out was like everybody wants to switch um and i'm trying oh and pikmin 4 so i do have that on this that was the big thing pikmin 4 so it's already set again though like i said in the last video if you're looking to add the games before it used to be convenient with tinfoil now you have to go download the rom put it on your pc and such big thing i do get a lot is that I mean, I'm, I'm a Windows user. I don't use Macs, I'm a Windows user. I do get people that say, hey, does this work on a Mac? I don't believe it does. It's gonna be a 95% no, in my opinion. There might be ways to finagle it, but big thing is, yes, you do need a Windows PC to get kind of all this down packed. Again, though, I love my devices, these Ultimate handhelds, they are great. But now let's talk about the next generation. Now I've had my device for a while, my new Ultimate Handheld, which as you can see, yes, this is a Steam Deck. If you look very carefully, I am running Windows 10 on this. I'm basically utilizing a dual boot. I do have Windows 10 and I still do have the Steam OS, Steam Deck OS. So when the device turns on, I could pick whether I wanna launch into Windows 10 or if I wanna go into the Steam OS. Now I've had this, I bought this about a month and a half after it was released. By the time this video goes out, which is gonna to be tomorrow, yes, I've had this for quite some time. About two or three months ago, we have now a competitive device. People might say it is better, which is known as the ROG Ally. I don't have an Ally. I don't really look too much at it. I've done, I've looked at some reviews on it, um, but I haven't upgraded to an Ally because of the price. Uh, I feel like they're very similar. You know, maybe the, the Ally has a faster press, I, Either way, I'm keeping my Steam Deck. Now, when these devices came out, even with the Ally, even with this one, I've had some people DM me saying, hey, Vic Man, I'm gonna buy it. If you want, I'll send it right to you. Maybe you can make a one terabyte, two terabyte. Somebody requested like a five terabyte hyperspin build. And basically they were just getting excited. Like, hey, maybe you could be the first one to make an image and all that. I basically declined. Uh, I feel like people are reaching. Uh, I feel like you're doing too much for a device like this so i'm going to talk later on about my personal opinion on this device and all that let's start with some basics let me tell you about the actual steam deck that i purchased i'll talk about the mods that i did to it and all honestly you could do these mods and then i'm going to tell you how i game with it how do i use it now let's talk about the actual steam deck that i purchased okay this is also in my opinion a big kind of positive compared to the ally the ally only has one option one price that is it take it or leave it whereas the steam deck even now I'm looking at the screen, there is three tiers, three different price points. So in my opinion, I was like, oh, I sat back, I said, you know, how often am I gonna play this? Do I really want, you know, I basically took like real life situations. So I obviously went with the cheapest option, which is the 399, 64 gig version. Now, in all honesty though, I did some modifying to this. I did open this up. I bought a $60 M.2 SSD, the specific one for the Steam Deck. And now I do have a 512 SSD Steam Deck. So you could kind of compare the pricing on that. If you do 399 plus the 60 bucks that I spent, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, I'm at 459. So far, $459 invested in this, whereas the 512 gig Steam Deck is at 650. Granted, yes, it has this whole anti-glare etched glass thing, that's why I went with the 64 gig. I knew I was gonna open it up. There's videos on how you could open up your Steam Deck and boom, I now have 512 gigs. Not to mention I still do have the SD card slot open. I personally have a 128 gig SD card because I have a bunch uh, from modding and stuff, but you could always essentially get a one terabyte uh, SD card for it. So that's basically the actual physical modding to this device. You could save your time and get the more expensive one with the better glass, but I'm the type of person where I'm cheap and I wanna save as much money as I can and get the best bang for the buck, that is what I did. Now, as far as the actual device itself, I do have the dual boot installed. There is a video on YouTube, a guy does it like step by step, very clean. He even does and shows you how to do the dual boot intro screen where you could pick. So right now I just turned off my device, I'll power it on, Basically, I followed that guy's video and it's just been great so far. So I do have the best of both worlds. I have Windows 10 and I have the Steam Deck or Steam OS. So I did Windows 10. I basically now could come here, press the Steam logo, and in a couple of seconds, we'll be into the Steam OS.
Now the big thing I basically said to myself is that what am I gonna use this for? What am I gonna, what do I, what's the objective with this? My main objective with this device was to play consoles. I knew I wanted to play at least the GameCube, at least the PS2, maybe the Wii, maybe the Wii U, but I basically wanted to play games growing up that I couldn't play or that I didn't just have the funds to get. Uh, again, I was a, the Ninten I was a Nintendo baby, uh, so everything was Nintendo for me, but PS2 had some bangers like Grand Theft Auto, uh, even had like SOCOM, um, you had like, well, Splinter Cell was also on the GameCube, but there's a lot of games, even with the GameCube, I just didn't have the funds to play. I never played Splinter Cell, so I knew for a fact I wanted to use this device for emulation. I knew I wanted to play retro systems, and hey, if I could play the current PC games, why not? That's a big advantage, and luckily, yes, you could do that with this device. Now, as far as actual modding, not really much physical modding. I did the route of opening this thing up to change out the SSD. If you are afraid to do that, then go ahead and get the bigger SSD. Some people though have the argument of, oh, I'm just gonna get the lower SSD and then put a one terabyte SD card on it. Keep in mind, again, SD cards have certain read and write speeds. So if you're trying to play some PC games through an SD card, you might have a bad time. Definitely, I would aim for the higher SSD. And again, don't be afraid, it's really not that difficult. There are videos on how to mod it. As far as like the mod, that's really all I did. Everything else is kind of like, if you wanna count like the dual boot windows, that took a couple of steps. Um, it wasn't that easy. It does take a couple of steps. You do also need the USB-C to USB. You do need a USB thumb drive that has the Windows installed disk. So if you're not familiar with that, then you might have a bad time. But that's really the only thing about modding. Now, as far as the actual emulators and stuff, this is awesome. Somebody made something called the Emu Deck. Uh, you literally install it from your deck. Uh, very simple stuff. Now, the Emu Deck scene, the creators, they did make a version for the Ally, or I should say the Windows desktop version. And you have to be a paid Patreon person for that. Whereas the Emu Deck, it was free. So, with this one simple install, I now have at least the emulators. As far as, like I said before, people did message me when this came out, even when the Ally came out, like, hey Vic, man, you should make like a hyperspin build and all that. I'm like, I don't think it's worth it. Yes, hyperspin, even launch box builds, it just keeps things kind of organized, but this is now how I'm gonna explain how I personally use my device. Now, as far as my opinion on these ultimate handheld devices, my opinion might be different than yours. You'd just be surprised, like I get the DMs of people saying, hey Vic, man, I wanna put like four terabytes on this. I want 15,000 games on the go. I just have a way different opinion and mentality when it comes to this. Now keep in mind this, you can't compare this to like an ultimate arcade cabinet. You're talking 43 terabytes in like a PC setup and all that versus like this. Uh, you know, I just, maybe I'm just different on how I wanna play this, but basically like I said before, the objective with this device, I bought this device so I could play my old tool games, but I wanna play my games that I couldn't play as a kid. I wanna play them fully, start to finish. That's where like on my deck, I only have about maybe 10 games on my deck. Whereas other people, they want 15,000 games on the go. I just don't like that mentality because basically you're gonna be launching Grand Theft Auto Vice City, you'll play it for 10 minutes, you'll exit it, then you'll go play some Super Mario Bros on the NES, you'll play it for 10 minutes, you'll exit it. That to me isn't really what I wanna use this device for. I wanna play a game fully throughout, which is basically what I'm saying is that I only have about 10 games on this. I have all the storage, yes, but I only have 10 games. This way I have to sit and fully play through. If you give too much of a variety, you know, you're gonna literally load this up and go, hmm, what do I want to play today? Whereas right now, for me, when I go to bed tonight, the new Ratchet and Clank, I'm gonna actually show you how I do the process of uploading the game and all that to get an idea on how this works. Uh, I'm gonna be playing Ratchet and Clank. I have a game in mind. Yesterday, I was playing The Godfather, which is on the PS2 emulator. I'm playing that as of yesterday, but right now, Ratchet and Clank came out. I now have to do the process of putting Ratchet and Clank on it. Again, just many mentalities, many different mentalities, Basically what I'm getting at is 
the way this works is you're going to put the ROMs you're going to play. And then when you are done, I do delete the ROM. That's how this device is. That's how I believe it should be used. This is actually funny because I've actually sent this out because some people have the mentality, like I said, they want four terabytes, they want all that. And you'd be surprised, they actually want a game like this. They want this. This. This is your four terabyte gaming. I, I don't know, I, this is not fun. <laughs> this is not, this is not practical to me, but basically, yes, I've had requests. People, Vic man, can you just put it on like a drive like this and I'm gonna put it on a dock? This now, you doing that, it, it took out the freedom of being a handheld. I would like to use the phrase all joking aside, but that's what it is. That is the request I get. And yes, that is what it would look like. If Unless you're gonna start Velcroing this and just killing the portability now, yes. Now real quick, let's talk about the actual games and such. As you know, with this Ultimate Handheld, I do have 5,000 retro art games, arcade to the NES and the Game Boys up to the N64. I do have that also on my deck. My retro arc, that whole profile there, it's about 50 gigs. 50 gigs is a lot. It's not small, it is a lot, but basically I do have, like I said before, my Game Boy. I have my retro stuff up to the N64 in retro art. Again, this MU deck program, that gives you all that. So it's pretty cool. Uh, before I was playing The Godfather, I was basically loading up some random games. I basically based it off the artwork. So I was running this last time, which is Back to Stone. I'll run that real quick. And again, what's really cool with RetroArch is that I do have like the save states and the load states. This also does have the retro achievements set. So I do get achievements and stuff. That's pretty cool. But basically if I hotkey L, I load my last save state. This was a pretty cool game. Uh, do I want to use that word actually? It was a random game. Uh, but yeah, cool. So again, I do have my 5,000 retro art games still on this. Now, going back to like I said with the MU deck, MU deck does install the other emulators such as PCSX2, Yuzu. So we do have technically this on this emulation, Citra, Dolphin, uh, PSP, and such. So there's just, there's, there's a lot going on here. Basically there's a lot more options with this than with this. Now let's talk about the actual file structure because now we're getting into a point where I'm gonna show you the actual process to download a game and then set it up and such as far as working on Steam OS. Big thing though is as far as the PC game side of it, sometimes it doesn't work within Steam OS, but it will work within Windows. Right now, live as I've been recording, I've been downloading the new Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. That is a new game that just came out for the PC and I'm basically right now installing it to my PC and I'm gonna show you the process as far as transferring it to the Steam Deck. So my RetroArch library, it's only about 50 gigs. Those games, again, arcade up to the N64. Number one, the ROMs aren't big. They aren't, they're not huge ROM files. And then number two, the power you need to run those types of games isn't much. It's almost like me trying to compare it to, hey, you know, putting a God of War on an SSD versus a regular spinning hard disk drive. It's a nightmare. It's almost the same mentality here. Basically what I'm getting at is that I have my 128 gig SD card. Out of that 128 gigs, I only am using 50 gigs for that retro stuff. Again, doesn't require much processing power and stuff. What am I getting at? Right now I'm downloading the new Ratchet and Clank. I'm gonna do the whole process. This is a big game. This is about 35 gigs, I believe. I would not put this game on my SD card because if I play it, I will experience slowdown. Again, I'm gonna go into the whole thing where I actually do a live testing because I don't even know if this is gonna work how it should on the Steam Deck, but I will show you how I will make it work on the Steam Deck and such. But basically what I'm getting at is ROMs after the N64. So like I said before, I have the, the Godfather on PS2. I have that ROM on my SSD. This way it just speeds faster and such. So I'm not really using the SD card much. I'm really using the SSD in this situation. So now I'm gonna show you like the file structure because this is where, like I said, if you're looking to modify this device, there's a couple of steps, especially when it comes to a PC game. Other ROMs, like the PS2 ROM, I have Pikmin 4 on this. I was able to download it directly from the Steam Deck because they weren't big files. You're talking like four gigs. Uh, but when you're doing like a file like 35 gigs, 
uh, it's going to take time. That takes a lot of time and, you know, I'd rather do the time here and then quickly just transfer it. So yes, you could download ROMs directly from this device. It's more about once you download it, you have to put it in a certain folder structure. This way you could read it in SteamOS and you could also read it in Windows. So now as far as ROMs and such, you could download it directly from the desktop mode on SteamOS or you could download it on Windows 10 once you do a dual boot. Basically you go to your Firefox, go to your ROM site and then download your ROM. Uh, I have a shortcut on my desktop for downloads and basically all my ROMs, they, they go here. Majority of them are all here. So as you can see, I have like the Warriors, True Crime. I even have the Godfather here, like I said. And then I also do have my PC games here. Uh, once you have that set, you go back into SteamOS and then go into your emulator and then adjust the directory. Now that we're back into SteamOS, I'll load up my PS2. And again, you're basically using the emulator here. This is where like a front end would make it easier. But again, at only 10 games, this is probably the easiest. I go to my game list. And as you can see, I have all my PS2 ROMs here. So I have Tony Hawk, uh, True Crime. But like I said before, I was playing The Godfather. So I will double click that and we'll let it launch. It's again, this is great. This is awesome. I'm able to game in bed and as you can see, I could press X and such. I will most likely cut once the music starts because I don't want to get hit with copyright infringement. But yes, this now is running PS2 and it runs it very well. It runs it great. And then as you can see, we are able to play. I have to basically extort this. Let's see if we get in. Oh, I need to unload. There it is. Who else is here? Oh, shoot. I shot the wrong. <laughs> oh, yep. There we go. Awesome. So as you can see, this PS2 emulation you cannot do on the older Ultimate console slash Switch. And then when you're done, you can just kind of obviously save your game, but hit those two together. You exit, or you could even just press this button here and then exit out. So I'm gonna show the process of installing this new Ratchet and Clank game. So it's a 40 gig file. I have my external drive here, my USB to USB-C dongle, and I'm doing it in Windows 10 on the Steam Deck. So keep in mind, I downloaded and put the game on my PC. I took the game folder now and then I'm putting it on my external. I have a shortcut on my desktop to put games here. That's where all my games go. This way it could talk within Windows and it also talks within Steam OS. So it is a big file, it's 38 gigs, so it's gonna take a while. But real quick, you could at least kind of see this file structure for the deck. Uh, you can see there it's like at deck download. So this way it talks between Windows and the Steam Deck. We're gonna let that transfer and we'll come back. So now the file transfer is done, I'm gonna shut down. We're gonna restart the deck and then we're gonna go into Steam OS. Now that we're back to Steam OS, we're gonna go to the desktop mode and we're gonna launch Steam. On the bottom left, we have to add a game. We're gonna add a non-Steam game. And then we're gonna browse to our downloads. Again, that's where we transferred it from, basically. We're gonna look for this Ratchet and Clank. Could even expand it there. And we basically need the EXE. Looks like there, rift apart. Press open. We're gonna add the selected program. And then we are gonna go back to gaming mode now we're almost there keep in mind i haven't tested this on the deck so we're going to see if it works now so i'm going to go now to my library and i'm in my non-steam and we're going to look up this rift apart as you can see that see rift apart i'm going to press a i have to go to the wheel here the gear i have to go to properties compatibility and then i have to put a check mark there we're going to try to run the game now let's see if it runs if it doesn't run, you have to now go with that uh, that properties section and then go down the drop arrows and test Proton. So you can see there, I failed. It said no license apparently. Let's go back down to properties, compatibility. We're gonna try a different Proton. We'll go back to Rift Apart. We're gonna try it again. Because it's downloading content. Let's see what we got. Uh, 
and no, I have a failure, no licenses. So I just saw with SteamOS, we were having an issue. So I loaded up Windows 10. We're gonna try to launch the game from Windows 10 directly. So what's great, again, in Windows 10, it does have this whole controller setup. So we're gonna double click the game. And we're gonna see if we could finally play some Ratchet and Clank. This says something about my GPU, that's fine. I'm able to press play. I had the same pop-up on my desktop. Basically, there's an option for a launcher. And now basically you're gonna see it didn't launch in Steam OS, but it will launch and work in Windows. So another big advantage, as you can see, cool. Hello. Another big advantage to having Windows installed on your Steam Deck. Cool. So even though it doesn't work on Steam OS, luckily with Windows 10 or Windows 11, I am able to play the new Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Again, what's great with the Windows setup too is that it recognizes the controller as an Xbox controller. So you will be able to get up and game. Again, this now, as you can see, with Windows, with all the emulation that you could do, Citra for 3DS, Dolphin, we're talking Wii, GameCube emulation, PS2, PS1, RetroArch, Yuzu, this right here is now dubbed the ultimate handheld. It's a thing of beauty. It is a thing of beauty. Now, don't get me wrong. If you still have one of these devices, it is still great to mod. Again, as you can see, no matter which way you do it, as far as playing a game, it does take a couple of steps. But once you get into the groove and understand the steps, it's really a cakewalk. It's very easy. Again, if you do have one of these, these are still great. I still play with mine, I still use mine. Again, I do have the dedicated Konami Switch cabinet. Uh, I love this thing. This is great. Honestly, this probably has better battery life than this. But again, this though is processing more. We are doing kind of higher definition gaming and such. So. Again, if you do have this device, don't get rid of it. Do what I did, modify it, and game on. But on that note, ultimate handheld, it's still ultimate, but this right here is the new ultimate handheld. This, or if you do have the Ally. I never had the Ally. Seeing the videos and stuff, they're very similar uh, items, devices. One might have better processing power, but all in all, it's really the same thing. The biggest thing for me is battery life. So far, while I've been playing my regular emulation, like I was playing The Godfather, even PC games, I'm probably getting a good, I would say, maybe four hours of playtime with this. Again, laying back and gaming, I've never had the battery die on this while I was playing, nor have I have it hit like 15%. Again, though, I do notice that it depends on what game I'm playing. If I'm doing like retro art gaming, the old school like NES, Super Nintendo stuff, this could probably take like six hours till it dies. But if I'm gonna play like that new Ratchet and Clank game I just showed off, you could hear like the fans are spooling up much faster. I would probably guesstimate you get maybe two to three hours if you were playing Ratchet and Clank. Again though, you could play with like the brightness and all that. All in all though, solid device. If you have this, definitely do recommend doing the dual boot with Windows 10 because as you can see, not all the games could work within Steam OS. Luckily, I have Windows 10. Another game that I do have on this is like Goat Simulator. Uh, I just downloaded that because it's like a game that you could just kind of just play around with. Same thing, Goat Simulator God of War will not launch in Steam OS, but it does work in the Windows 10 boot. So all in all, there you guys have it. Ultimate handheld just gaming on the go. And again, if you're like me, I'm using this device to really fully play a specific game. I'm not looking to have 20,000 games on this. Again, I play one game, I'll play Ratchet and Clank. Again, almost 40 gig file. I'll play it, once I'm done, I delete it and I put it in a new game. Game on, my guys, game on.